Today we're going to be talking about iCloud and how it can help you with your iPhone in lots of ways. iCloud has been around for a while and there are some other services so it kind of covers everything but we're going to be more specific on iCloud. So other services that are similar are Dropbox, Google Drive, and Microsoft OneDrive. So they're all about the same idea. So in the beginning half of the video, what I'm going to do is talk about iCloud specifically and what the drives are like. And we will also, after that, show you how to go ahead and set up your iCloud drive after that. Welcome everybody. I'm Kevin with HelpfulTutorials.net. I'm going to go through and teach you this now and go through a few things. If you're new here and you like app discovery, iPhone tutorials, tips, tricks, all the new stuff, make sure you do me a favor and smack that subscribe button. And with that, let's go ahead and just jump into it. <laughs> so iCloud, what is it? Anytime someone thinks of iCloud, they think, where's my data going? Is it up in the air? Is it up in the clouds? Well, the iCloud is just a name. It's not actually up in the clouds, really. Basically what happens is Apple has some servers in a very large area and all the data is in there. So it's stored on these computers for you and what it's storing is your data. So say you take a picture and you're out of storage on your phone. What you could do is you could use iCloud and Apple will basically hold it for you and you can access it from any device that you use in the future. So it's really sweet because say your phone gets run over by a car because you left it on top of your roof. Now you don't have those pictures anymore, but when you set up another one, since you have iCloud set up, the pictures will come back down and you won't lose them. Now this works really good with pictures and also with phone numbers because you know phone numbers, we don't remember them like we used to. So it's really important to go through and set this up if this is something that sounds good to you. Apple does go ahead and give you five gigabytes for free, which is a lot unless you're snapping a whole lot of pictures like me, but I do have two boys, so there's a lot of Kodak moments going on. If you want, you can add on more space. For 50 gigs, it's 99 cents a month. 200 gigs, 2.99 a month. And two terabytes, 9.99 a month, which those, I think they're very generous on their price. I was very surprised by their price. I thought they would be double this, but they're not. So I used the 99 cents plan for a while and then I grew to the 299. So now I do the 299 because I just take so many pictures, but I have a feeling I'll be on that one for a long time. So the good thing about this is you can spend less money on your iPhone and get the smaller storage, the say 32 or 64 gig, you can get that instead of the 128 or 256 gigs because all that is is storage space. And with iCloud, since you get five gigs free and you can pay for extra, you can go ahead and just do it that way and you don't have to pay out of pocket ahead of time. You can just get what you need. So it's a pretty amazing service. There's a few things to know about it. It uses the same account you use as the Apple Store. So that's nice, you don't have to really make a new account. You can also find your iPhone Apple devices. So if you lose any of the devices, if you have iCloud turned on, you can go ahead and find where they're located at and then you can track them down or the last location. They also have something called Intune Match, which is $25. So any songs that you had on your phone, they'll put up in the cloud for you for free and they'll just use their version. So it's kind of nice. And then you have that, I believe it's 25 a year. Also, you do have an option to set up backup automatically, the iCloud, which will happen when your phone's plugged in and it's on Wi-Fi. So that's nice, so it'll always stay backed up for you. You can also save files if you have a Mac. You can move files from that to like a PC or to your iPhone. So it does help that way as it's kind of like the service Dropbox or Google Drive or OneDrive where you can just move those around. Automatically, when you turn it on, my photo stream will auto upload. So if you want your pictures to go up automatically to the cloud, you can go ahead and turn that on. 
I think it's a nice feature. You can always delete photos if you don't want them. Just remember they do go to deleted items for 30 days. So if you really want them deleted, go in your deleted items and then go ahead and make sure you delete them out. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and show you iCloud on the device itself. So let's switch over to this gear and give you a good idea of what this is all about. So first thing we're going to do is go into settings. And then my iCloud is there. We're going to go ahead and select it at the top. Now that I'm in here, we're going to go ahead and choose iCloud. And here is my iCloud. It is turned on. As you can see, I use 69.5 gigabytes, which is a good amount. Photos is the majority of everything, as you can see on the scale there. Uh, I do go ahead and back up pretty much everything but messages because messages I don't feel are that important to back up. I feel like it's kind of a waste. Uh, to be honest, I'm going to turn news off too and stocks because I don't use the stocks app currently. And you can go through and not using home. You can go ahead and choose what you need here. That works. Then you can go through other things. iCloud Drive, we'll keep that on. iCloud Backup is here. So these three items at the end are kind of important. You have Keychain. What that is, is it's Apple's way of saving passwords for you. You can go ahead and turn that on if you like. I use one password instead, so I prefer that. Find my iPhone. That's so you're able to find it. And just to take a peek in here, you do have also an option here that we could turn on. Send last location. So if your phone's about to die, what it'll do is it'll send its last location to Apple. That way, if someone did take your phone and by the time you get to a computer the phone is no longer on because the battery died you'll be able to go ahead and still find where it's located or at least its last location before the battery died so we'll go back here and here are the other options I have some things turned off because it's just like you know some things you use and sometimes you don't so that are the options for iCloud. Like I said, I would turn it on. I think it's great to have it on. You can also manage storage and it'll show you what everything's using more specifically. And now that we're here, we can get an idea of what we have here. So you can also share with family. You can do share, sharing family. Uh, I'm gonna do that in another video because that's a whole different thing. So I'm gonna show you how you can go ahead and set all that up in another video. And here's the items. And like I said, photos is like 98% of my stuff. Uses a lot. Anything with MB or KB, those are small. So it's just the gigabytes. The backup in the photos is the large thing. So that's iCloud. I do suggest turn it on. Use the five gigs. It's really nice. Like I said, if your phone gets destroyed or you upgrade, all your stuff just comes automatically down once you log in, which is amazing. And it's such a good feeling because you're like, I don't have to put all my contacts in. I don't have to send those pictures over. They're just there. So I really do hope you enjoyed this overview of iCloud. And I thank you so much for the view. I really think you'll enjoy this video. I'll see you over there.